Well, good evening and welcome to the workshop. I spent quite a lot of time in here today, discovered quite a few things about the locomotive uh, chassis. Uh, unfortunately, all of that video was on a camera which I had borrowed, which uh, wasn't actually compatible with my computer, so that's all been lost. I'm going to have to catch you up verbally, so I do apologise. So, as a first, uh, first pass at this, I've got my um, machinist square in here. And if I bring it up hard here, you can see there is air there. If I can move it to the other side, it's now hard up against that slot. And there's air on this side. What that means is the chassis is, is pulled around like in that direction. Right, the two frames are bolted together in the two corners. And it looks like they're pretty much identical, at least as it refers to these holes here and these holes here. Having run this back and forth a few times, I've seen there's only about plus or minus five thou from axle box to axle box, and it's not all in one direction. So I'm, I'm fairly certain that we're, we're as close to straight as we can be, um, and I'm going to take that as, as, as granted. The reason that I'm doing this setup is because now, although these holes are perfectly matched to each other for the various features, the axle boxes are, are not and they are very slightly out. A couple of them have got a little taper to them, and a couple of them have got a step in. So this one, for example, is about uh, 30 or 40 thou narrower than the one behind it. Uh, and over here, it's uh, it's offset very, very slightly. So I'm just gonna, I'm using a brand new long series end mill. I'm gonna take some very light cuts, just back and forth, uh, to skim these down to be exactly the same width. And ideally, exactly the same width on both. Let's see what happens. I need to just tickle the end of this. I'm going to do that quite a few more times to come down here until I can get these surfaces perfectly flat and clo planar with each other. Lots of spring passes. So I'm not going to let you suffer through all of that. I'll, I'll time lapse you through that. These slots actually are about 20 thou undersized in their current state. So now we're machining them and actually we're gonna end up about 20 thou over to just get everything nice and square. Okay, so that seems to have cut off more at the bottom than the top, but uh, given that we know that the top surface here is, is within five thou or so of being flat relative to the spindle, I think we can say these are probably slotted at an angle rather than that I've done something hilariously wrong. Um, I really like the surface there, that's really nice. I'm going to repeat that on this face and then over in the axle boxes over here. Um, it's just going to be the same operation. I'm going to be touching off and then getting it down so they're, they're both uh, uh, flat and parallel with each other uh, and, and then just go down bit by bit. Well, I said I'd include the mistakes, and uh, yeah, literally finished both sides. They're, they're within uh, two thou of each other in thickness in this slot, and uh, when I was just surfacing the bottom of this, uh, the corner of the end mill caught this, uh, twisted the whole uh, vertical head around, grabbed further into this, and just jammed the whole thing. So, very, very frustrating. I've used a file to tidy up these slots. As you can see, we had a few chatter marks um, there. The uh, reverse of this side is where the uh, the damage happened. So uh, I still need to figure that one out. Uh, but in general, I think I'm okay with this. I think that, uh, that's obviously not ideal, but it's... Uh, it's nice and flat and smooth, um, with, with some divots that are lower down. So uh, yeah, short of uh, replacing these entire frames, I think this is as good as these are going to get. So that's still an option, but let's take these as far as we can. I think we kind of failed successfully on this one because we have, um, although it's, uh, you know, we're, we're at uh, about 12.70 there and about, uh, well, that's... 1266 there, 65. So we've actually got these holes within, not only are they parallel from uh, frame to frame, but they are now all square um, and the same 
thickness, same same width of uh, 1270, 1268, 1271, something like that. So uh, we're about between 18 and 20 thou over in width, uh, but we have now at least got these nice and parallel. So when we do get the bolster and the frame stay back in position, uh, using the holes here, which we're, we're using to bolt the thing together, uh, we should be fairly, fairly sure that the axle boxes will be aligned along the width of the locomotive. So something of a mixed blessing now, having these apart, you can see I've removed the very thick primer that was over the bearing surfaces. Measuring across here, we're actually over the 5 8 defined in the drawings for the width of this entire piece, which isn't too bad actually, because we've got this um, unfortunate uh, section here where the tool dug in. Um, and so everything, all of these faces need to be machined down um, by between, you know, across the same plane, obviously. But in, in this case, I think this is about uh, about 10 thou off here, about 20 thou off here and so on with the other frame as well. So we do have to set this up on the mill and get this surfaced. Uh, but what it does mean is that we can be guaranteed that these are all going to be the same thickness. And so the slots in the axle boxes, which are going to fit inside, like so, all those slots will be exactly the same too. So a bit of a uh, silver lining to that cloud. Rest in peace, my perfectly trammed in vice. It's time for you to go. <laughs> okay, uh, I need to set this up again because the table has run out of travel. Right, a few days have gone past and you can see now we have the chassis side clamped down on top of some one, two, three blocks. And that's given me the required height to be able to face off the top of these. I've got the milling cutter down at the correct height, uh, which should result in an overall thickness of about uh, 610 thou. So about 15 thou under spec. Um, but I'm pretty sure that will allow me to clean up all the faces and get them nice and flat and parallel. So let's get started. This is the axle box that had all that scoring and you can just about see the evidence here, here, here and there. But uh, I took it down by about 15 thou in total and uh, the rest of the surface is looking good. So I think I'm going to call that one good. Okay, so I've been using my micrometer and measuring up the thickness of uh, the horns here. And they are all within a couple of thou of each other. They're all between uh, 610 and 612 thou in thickness across here. So now I've got to figure out what to do with the bolster and the stretcher. Well, here are the two original stretchers and bolsters, and here are the two replacement castings which have arrived from Reeves, and I can't complain, it's great service. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that video. Now we've got the frames and the horns specifically really parallel and in line with each other, um, you know, identical in terms of thickness and width. It's going to make machining the axle boxes when we get back to it very, very simple. And that's kind of what I wanted to mention is I've mostly been following the Curly Lawrence build series in Model Engineer 1947. And he starts off with the frames, then goes to the axle boxes and the axles and the wheels and so on in, in, in a very natural order of things. And I thought the chassis, you know, being that it was primed and looked like it had been assembled, was in a better condition than it really was, uh, which is why I was proceeding with the axle boxes. Uh, so I do want to get the chassis down pat. So the next video will either be remachining the bogey bolster or machining the new casting. Uh, and then when that's complete, I'll get back to where I was, which was the axle boxes, and we can move forward from there. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.